Joe Pietaro here with your Muscle Sport Minute for today. This episode is brought to you by Goliath Labs NO2 Monster Nitric Oxide Booster. Break out the monster. You got this cool looking alien, incredible Hulk dude on the cover of that uh, label there. I love that stuff. My buddy Bart always hooks me up with some great shit from Goliath Labs. Make sure you go there right now. As soon as this video is over, click on the link right below here. Right there, right there. Buy it, buy it. Buy some stuff. Hey, uh, we posted an article on uh, MuscleSportMag.com a little while ago, but uh, since we have the uh, new calendar year coming out soon, I figured it would be a cool story to uh, to talk about a little bit. How to streamline some of these uh, shows and the uh, the long hours and hours, just never-ending categories, and it's just way too much. And yeah, we we get it. We know it's the uh, it's a money maker, but uh, in a perfect world which it's never going to be, but let's just pretend. Imagination, okay? Let's just say we had a perfect world. These would be the categories that I would like to see as far as these shows go. Amateur and professional, of course. Men's open bodybuilding, men's 212 bodybuilding, women's bodybuilding, yeah, bring it back. I mean, there's no need for a uh, figure and women's physique. You had women's bodybuilding, and we'll get to... Uh, what could be later on. And also, I think women's fitness is definitely something that they're, they're pushing out, sort of like the way they started pushing out women's bodybuilding. Those women are the only athletes on that stage. They're the only ones that could do anything. Everybody else is just basically standing there posing, uh, either if it's your bodybuilding posing or your bikini-type posing or somewhere in between. So I think women's fitness is a, a great category. And it kind of... You know, had figure involved in it because the posing round or the swimsuit round, not the uh, routine round, they were figure women. I mean, that's what they that's what they look like. They look like figure women. They're not bodybuilders, and they have much more muscle than a bikini competitor does. So uh, I think that at worst case scenario, you would put a fifth category in, which would be figure. If you have, you don't want to say, well, if they can't compete, if they don't have a routine, they're not uh, athletic like that. At least if they look the part, they can still get on stage. But that would be you know, the most I would say to have would be a fifth category. So it would basically just be the two men's bodybuilding, 212 and open, women's bodybuilding, fitness, and then maybe figure depending on uh, the certain situation at the show. But uh, I would say you would have the physique category, male, male physique. You wouldn't have women's physique because bodybuilding would be there and possibly figure. Men's physique and bikini would just be a model search type of category, beach body kind of thing. That's how it first started out. I, if to have it as an official category and to say uh, physique Olympia, I think is fucking retarded. I'm just totally not into that at all. But let's just say... This is what they wanted to have. All of those categories they currently have, including classic physique, which, again, I'm not a fan of whatsoever. I think it's redundancy. I think it's overkill. And there's no need to have, um, you know, another category when if these guys can't be in a classic physique, can't be a 212 category, then uh, maybe uh, men's physique. If you have to have all of these things, you can't keep adding categories. So, so let's just say that you're going to... Uh, break down all of these these uh, shows, you can't have all of these things in the same night. It's just way too much. So open bodybuilding 212, classic physique, women's physique, and then the next day you could have men's physique, figure, fitness, and bikini. Uh, it's the, I think the way they break it down is just way, it's way too much uh, and takes forever. And I'm glad I don't have to sit there and worry about every category and every competitor at shows since Muscle Sport Mag doesn't cover shows along those lines, like shows and results and things like that. We cover the event, and the show is part of the event, the expo, the show, and everything like that. But we're not going to sit there and say who finished in uh, eighth in uh, category B in men's physique, NPC, uh, who got classic, right? So that's just my two cents on it. I think that you can easily eliminate some of these categories. There was no need for them. These It used to be for the elite people that got on stage. Now it's pretty much everybody can find the guy. And I mean, a schlep like me, an old fuck like me, I can diet down and, and you know maybe go a little uh, heavier and I can enter a master's competition. I might f finish fucking last, 
but I would get up there. I wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't be totally out of the realm of possibility. I can be like a physique or a men's classic physique or board shorts, men's bikini, masters kind of fucking thing. Believe me, I'm being very facetious, but I'm also have a truth, you know, a little truth involved with tongue in cheek. Because why the fuck, why the hell not? You you go to these amateur shows, these guys look like shit, a lot of these guys. Let's be fucking honest. I'm like, oh, give them credit for getting, no, I don't give them credit for getting on stage. They look like jerk offs. Fucking at least half of them look like fucking shit and shouldn't even be up there. And it's an embarrassment. And it's a waste of fucking everybody's time, including their fellow competitors who were legit up there. So no need for all these categories. But whatever. I digress. MuscleSportMag.com, $32 a year, free U.S. shipping. You can get this back issue right here with Rich Piana at Slash Store or Slash Subscribe if you want to get the new ones. See you guys soon.